Disclaimer. This podcast features explicit language and discussions sexual in nature. It may contain subjects uncomfortable to some. Please understand that the opinions shared on this podcast are not a representation of any organization or employer the host may be a part of. Welcome back, everybody. We're here to talk about stuff and things. Donate to our Kofi. You can buy us a coffee on Kofi. You can also donate us all of your life savings. All of your life savings. Our our podcast setup has definitely improved. Yeah, I think I think we've gone a long way since our first episode. Do you remember our first episode so long ago in a galaxy far, far away? Jay, I heard a I heard a little story that you had a a bathroom experience recently. Oh no, are they are they still talking about that at Target? It was one time <laughs> I had two like mini shots of espresso at Starbucks. It was a one time thing. Believe me, it was as uncomfortable for me as it was you. I'm sorry. I heard there was a lot of poop. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, not that time. Yeah. We're talking about the gender neutral bathroom uh, time, you know. Oh. You were at some kind of festival and you uh, yes. went to a gender neutral bathroom. It was like your first experience. Yeah, so I was at SEAF, the Seattle Erotic Art Festival. Loved it. Great, great time. And yeah, it was my first time in a gender-neutral bathroom, which I did not even know that I, that was the thing until I was in it, um, to be honest. Had a couple of drinks that night, just kind of going with the flow. I went into the restroom, not really thinking anything about it. You're there to do business. Yeah. You're pretty much in and out unless there's Starbucks and shots of express. Espresso, yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. then there's messes and you just can't get out. But no, so. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Another story? But it was, um, yeah, I went, to, I went up to a urinal. I actually think when I was going into the restroom, there, I was behind someone that was dressed in a very feminine attire. Mm -hmm. They went to, I believe, wash their hands at first. I went over to urinal. Then they came up, not right next to me. You know, that that would have been very odd if there's like 20 urinals open and she's like right next to me. Yeah, because there's like 20 other open ones. Right. You don't get the one right next to someone. That's like common etiquette. Yeah, Yeah. I do that with stalls. I do that with stalls. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I see someone go in one and they're all open, I'll go in like the one further down. Right. So there's rules. There's rules to follow. Unspoken rules that we all know. Uh, Well, not everybody knows. That is true. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) That is true. But I believe they they came up to, I think maybe they left like a couple empty and then went to one. There there were no like dividers in between the urinals. They were all just like in a line. And yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. So at first, like, I just kind of like glanced over. I'm doing my own thing. Cause and I you're think, like, oh, there's a woman peeing next to me. Yeah. So okay. again, I had a couple of drinks. So it was one of those times where, like, I saw movement out of the corner of my eye, so I kind of just, like, naturally looked. And then I was like, wait, what? And then, like, looked again. And you're like, oh, it's a woman at the urinal. It's not a normal thing to see, but... Classic double take, of course. It's not a, it's not a common thing to see. Not a very common thing to see. First time in my life. Yeah. But... I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And Mm -hmm. I think if anything, I was like, oh, cool. Sweet. Like, wow. Like everybody can use the bathroom here. (laughs) Like what a, what a kind of like a power move right now. (laughs) What a power move right now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, But yeah, like I, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Feeling intimidated by the urinal. He's like, I mean, it's, it's Seattle. (laughs) Like, yeah, not as uncommon. No. Right. As other places. But for us Floridians coming to out here, it is kind of different. It is kind of different. And it's not surprising or shocking at all when you see multiple genders in one bathroom together. 
because everyone's just using the bathroom. It's right. I right like they're just using the bathroom like normal. I mean, I'm making phone calls and doing my makeup. There's one time I <laughs> ate lunch in there. Ew. What? I mean, someone No. No. Not once no. in your in your entire school life you never I, had a depressing lunch time so, and went into the bathroom. And oh, wait, lunch. so you're talking about high school. Well, yeah. I didn't want to get into it, but you guys I, never had like a, I have a question. What? What well, foods are best to eat well, in the bathroom? So there's that question. There's also a question <laughs> of were you going number one or number two? What? I was just sad. Okay, there's uh-huh. times where you get sad. And you won't be alone. So you were hiding in the restroom. You weren't yeah. using the restroom as you're eating lunch. Yeah. See, I, I hid in okay. the band room. I didn't I hide in the toilet. That's crazy too to think about. Like so many people think like the big argument with trans people in the bathroom mm. is oh they're just gonna be in there putting our children's safety at risk or putting other people's safety at risk. And it's crazy to me because for the longest time, for me, the bathroom has been a place of, like, safekeeping, like, where I can go and be alone. No one's going to bother me. I can be alone with my thoughts. I can use the bathroom peacefully. No one's going to bother me. I have my private time. But everyone thinks when it comes to trans people in the bathroom that it's not – it's like everyone's not going to treat it as a private moment still. And that that baffles my mind. It's just people using the bathroom. There's like, nothing dangerous about us being in there. No, I should be able to, if I want to, I should be able to go use the urinal. And no one should be giving me flack about it. Right. It, I, I 100% agree. Mo- most of the time, I'm just, I'm, I'm there to do my business and try to get out. As quickly as possible. I don't like to spend a lot of time in the bathroom. Yeah, I want to get in and out. To me, it's kind of gross. I'm yeah. like, oh, like let's leave. So yeah, so just yeah, everyone out there, no, I did not get mugged or harmed or raped in the restroom. It was, it was just like every typical day in the in the restroom. It, there was no big deal. There was no conversation. Yeah. I did my business. They did their business. I hope. Both of us washed our hands afterwards. That's like that's my that's my biggest thing is make sure you wash your hands yeah. after the restroom. If anything, there should be a law against you not washing your hands. <laughs> yeah, after I, you yeah. use the restroom, especially Florida. I think they should definitely be. Yeah, looking yeah, at the adding washing your hands laws. Yeah. If anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but instead, Florida is too busy trying to pass pass laws, making it harder for trans people to use restrooms well trans people don't even exist or or gay people to be you know well that's that's what i'm confused about because you're not even allowed to say it you can't say it but then you want to classify who can and cannot use the restroom without saying it Uh, it's very confusing it's a very confusing time it is confusing to me that we're coming to a point in time where your genitalia is very important to dignify the gender that you are. Like, people need to know what's between your legs. When I transitioned, I had never been at a point in my life where people ask me about my genitalia like it's a normal public happening. Like, it's a normal question. You know, I'm, I'm not asking you anything inappropriate. I just want to know, do you have a penis? Yeah. I, just, I just need to know. I just need to know, do you have a penis? But yeah, can't use the bathroom anymore in Florida. Yes. I mean, we can, but you have to be careful. So it's headed towards the Senate. However, as it stands right now, if it did pass the Senate, it would be a criminal offense for a person to use a restroom other of the gender other than what they were assigned to at birth. Right, and then it listed like a like a places that it applied to, and it was like private businesses, jails, hospitals, stuff like that. And I kind of like wondered what was left. I'm not really sure. Yeah, because I know like uh, in some states uh, where they banned it, it would be like, well, but Target that their policy is that you can use whatever, so it doesn't matter. That yeah. that's not going to count anymore, basically, right? Not entirely sure. I would have to like sit down and really look at the bill. Who's going to be inspecting 
people's genitalia to uh, make sure their genitalia matches their birth gender. And also, why I I guess it's because it is Florida, but why is genitalia so important to people? Like, if you're not going to be like interacting with them in a sexual manner, then why does it matter? Well, the big important thing to take away there is now in those states where that's law, you have to meet society's idea of what female looks like for people to be comfortable with you in that bathroom. Yeah. That's what it's going to boil down to. Basically coming down to people's personal opinion of if you pass. Yeah. Which is crazy. And I also think, you know, you kind of ask, like, who's going to be inspecting people? Yeah. But uh, people are going to be assholes. Sorry, but they will be. And they're just going to be like, oh, I think this is a person using the incorrect bathroom, and I'm going to call 911. And, and really what those laws do is they protect those people mm. that are bigoted that want to get involved with your genitals. That's who it protects. Also, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of picturing this bogging down law enforcement. So imagine <laughs> you, you, you're trying to go oh. about your day, right? Oh. You, you have a schedule. You wake up in the morning. You write three people tickets for speeding. You go and you get a box of donuts, right? And then, you know, you're you're trying to respond. You're trying to save lives. Or maybe, you know, someone's in need. Something like that. Oh, nope. I'm responding to a 1093 at the Target restroom because someone may be using the incorrect bathroom. Grandma Martha over here is like having a panic attack because some trans person's in the bathroom. You got a Karen in the bathroom <laughs> trying to get violent with a trans woman. Or mask presenting cis yeah, females. Yeah, that's, or, that's crazy because like, it might come down to the point where they're like, well, let me see your birth certificate. And that person's like, well, here it is. Yeah, I have my handy dandy pocket sized um, birth I, certificate yeah, right, right here. Well, it's kind of like the You're Nazis. You're going to have to start like, freaking <laughs> carrying your papers. I know. Yeah. Here are no. my gender papers. Here's my gender papers. <laughs> and and I Sounds mean, ridiculous. I mean, no disrespect to our law enforcement. My my dad was a police officer. And I'm ninety nine percent sure he would one hundred percent agree to me and probably say something like, "This is fucking stupid." Is probably what he would say. Yeah, it's a waste of resources and yeah. Uh, time. Yeah, like, they don't care. They like yeah. showing up to a call like that. They're like, "Why?" Oh yeah, I should be doing something much more important than this yeah like Bathrooms. like stopping me from speeding or something oh my oh. gosh it just <laughs> the thing that like popped into my head was like remember back in like elementary school or middle school we'd have like hall pat- patrols yeah right like make sure you're like make sure you're in class oh, oh do you have your pass it's like this, it's like this, that this might create more jobs for people yeah, mm. they could be like I could a, be the bathroom monitor, could, like a yeah. D- inspector. Yeah. yeah, or yeah, I'd take that job. I'm I'm very qualified for that job. It's like what was that? What's the the thing that they teach you in school? The golden rule. Punch them in the face. The the other one. Oh. <laughs> um. Just treat people how you want to be treated. Yeah. You know. Exactly. So yeah. you like to be respected in a certain way. No. Yeah. Well, you know. If you yeah. give a little respect, you'll get a little respect back. Yeah, if you're you know? going to ask me about my penis in public, well, guess what? I'm going to ask about your penis in public. Very simple. Well, some of them might want that, though. This is true. And see, I was I was thinking about the other golden rule, just so everyone knows. If someone disrespects you, punch them in the face. I'm kidding. <laughs> we don't advocate we for do. violence on our, on our show. We do not. I'm just kidding. Yeah. When you get to know me, I'm always kind of the joke jokester of the crew. So, yeah. is that so? Yeah. Is that so? Oh, is that? Is that so? Are you sure yeah. about that? <laughs> are, are you sure, sure about, that? about that? We need that button. <clears throat> the people that are making a big deal out of the whole restroom argument. They're not viewing it the same way, obviously, as we are. Yeah. And I want to use a specific old terminology that I'm pretty sure is not accepted anymore today. But it it goes back to transsexuals. Mm. Mm. And I know a long time ago, every it was kind of like 
a lot of people viewed it as being transsexual because they thought it was a sexual thing, mm-hmm. not an actual gender identity. Mm-hmm. Right. And obviously we've kind of improved, but I feel like right. they are stuck there in this sexual yeah. deviancy. Well, using that type of terminology does kind of strip us of our identity because they they boil it down to sexuality. I'm not a trans person because I identify that way. I'm a trans person because it's my sexuality. Maybe that's what my sexuality drives this persona, I guess is what they're trying to say. Or maybe that helps them be able to justify hating us. Like, yeah. Instead of being like they're transgender people, it'll be like they're transsexuals. Yeah, it makes it's it sounds more perverse yeah. than saying trans person. It, yeah. it does have I a know. more negative connotation to it. So of course, of course, they would prefer to use that term. Yeah, especially just, if they're talking in public, you yeah. know, about it, like it, at like any kind of meeting or protest or anything. They're gonna try to make us look bad, right? Or transvestites. Yeah. They love that one too, because then that just that just says it's a person dressing that way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Terminology. Yeah. Terminology. I do like the only times basically that happens very often in the restrooms that I do not feel safe are when there's little kids in the restroom. I'm like terrified of those little guys. I'm terrified. <laughs> they're no, they're always screaming, they're making a mess everywhere. They don't understand line systems, so you're like waiting so, in a line. They just go in, just like on a plane. Yeah, they're the worst on planes. Yeah. Oh, movies, movies. Yeah. I think they're if good. anything, they should just be banning children from places. Yeah. I, to be completely honest, that would this. save everyone <laughs> a lot of trouble. The, all this bathroom talk and stuff started from your experience in a gender neutral bathroom at. What was the show that you went to? What was oh? We kind of went on a whole little yeah. conversation or a we side did. conversation. It's kind of like we forgot what we were talking about there for a moment. Uh, that totally never did. happens. We follow the script. We follow the script. <laughs> we never get sidetracked, and we never have side conversations or sidebars. Right. 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 <laughs> never. Never. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Seif, the Seattle erotic art festival how was that uh, yeah you were you were posting tons of pictures in the discord i saw yes so that's actually a really good point if you want to kind of interact with us more or on a different level i would say definitely check out our discord there's links in all of our videos at the bottom on youtube so um but yeah, so for instance, I went to I went to the Seattle Erotic Art Festival. I was taking tons of videos and everything like that, and I was just posting them in the Discord server. I don't know if I don't know if you guys liked it or not, but I was doing it. And also, <laughs> some of those were spicy <laughs> images. I liked them. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Ooh, they all the bondage." I was yeah, was oh exciting. yeah, it was it was. I like how they display it, like it's very art. Artsy, very artsy. So that will be, that's like one of the biggest things I really love about Shibari is that to me, it's not, it's not sexual. It's not like perverse. It's not nudity for the sake of nudity. It's very artistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you take a very simple person rope and then you make like this beautiful art form and there's so much that you can do with it. And I think that's, I'm kind of going on a little weird art tangent year, but um, I remember when I was in college in art class, there, there was a, we, we were shown like a piece of art and it was, you know, very abstract paint just kind of thrown on it. Somebody was like, how is that art? How is that famous? I could do that. Like, give me those colors and I can throw it on the canvas. Um, and the art teacher said that the fact that you did not do it yeah. makes it art. Yeah. So this is what one person did with very simple colors and a canvas. And to me, that's that's Shibari. That's very simple rope, 
However, you can get very crazy with the knots and then suspension play and how how you tie somebody up. It's almost like endless. People are the canvas at that point. Yeah. And actually, no. there was a performance that I just loved so much. It was a Bob Ross performance. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, but, but Shibari? But Shibari. Oh, that's cool. Uh, suspension Shibari. Did he put happy little trees? Like, how did that work? Did he rope? tie them into happy little trees? <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. They, in fact, he tied them up to a happy little tree. No, so it, it started off kind of very playful. So you had Bob Ross painting a picture. Uh, you you had a female kind of like trying to model, and Bob Ross wasn't very happy. He was making a <laughs> lot of mistakes. And eventually it leads into him then uh him then using her kind of as a canvas so tying oh, her okay. up suspending her putting paint on her having her drip the paint onto the canvases below and it was it was an amazing amazing performance i i absolutely loved it and they actually gave out the canvases to like the audience and i actually oh, wow. have one it's it's really cool and they like autographed it and very very nice that sounds really cool. Couple. You have to show us. That sounds yeah. cool. Yeah. I don't think we got to see that part, but I definitely saw a lot of the pictures that you posted in the Discord. So it looked like a lot of fun. And I will say it's just the whole atmosphere, right? So you go into a place and all of a sudden the things that you like are a hundred percent normal and accepted and by no means are you kind of like the the weird one in the group or in the room you're you're surrounded by thousands of people that are just like you that like the things that you like and yeah for me it was just amazing i, I it's hard <laughs> it's hard to form into words when you're like in a space where, where you're you, so accepted yeah and it's you can you don't have to worry yourself. you don't have to, there's no worry to express yourself the way you want to like you can walk around in a total shibari rope like outfit and that's it and, and openly, no one's gonna look twice at you right and openly talk about rope all you want with yeah. whoever because or dungeon stuff you know it's accepted amongst everyone there so. yeah and you get to go and you get to like kind of sit and watch panels of people discussing about like porn today i got to meet an author um of a book a boy named sue Mm. and he was very nice to kind of get to know. I, I did know of the book before meeting him, so as soon as I ha like saw like author of <laughs> A Boy Named Sue, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Holy crap, I'm a big fan. <laughs> and, it, you know, for instance, like hearing his talk, uh, it was really kind of uplifting, him talking about his personal struggles of shedding the skin of who he pretended to be all these years and finally getting to be himself. And yeah, it it's it was amazing. I I definitely felt like you know I I went to it, and then <laughs> going back to work Monday morning, it was like <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why am I here? I want to go back. Just staring at like you know everything seemed kind of like colorless almost. You know, mundane. The, yeah, mundane. And it was like oh hmm. oh can't can't top this Seattle Erotic Art Festival. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a shame we didn't get to go this year. Hopefully next year. <sighs> However, I will say However. Even though yes, I I 100% believe you two should have went. I think you would have enjoyed it very much. We are going all three of us to a Shibari class. Oh yeah, that's right. I you got us signed up, right? Yes. I believe it's in july i would Ooh, need to double check the that's data exciting. That. yeah that's gonna be really exciting maybe we'll get some clips and uh post it on the on natural some youtube page maybe i'll start calling it youtube uts yeah on uh -huh. the uts <laughs> on oh. the on the uts youtube page yeah um that's exciting uh maybe we can ask and see if there's a policy on videotaping i will have to double check it's a very small class. It's reserved for, I believe, eight couples. Mm. Obviously, they don't want 
probably pictures and filming of other groups and stuff. But oh, if it's yeah. just you. It'll all yeah. be a matter yeah. of consent and who's okay with it. It's yeah. but we'll have to talk with them. But yeah. That'd be super cool. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, I'm very excited. That I like be Rogue. Fun. Getting learning and showing what we've learned. You know? Yep. Be really cool. No. Seattle Erotic Art Festival. You got anything else to add to it? Oh. Like what was your what was your favorite part? You did talk a lot about the Bob Rouse exhibit, <laughs> but like is there anything else that really stood out? And I know you also met uh, someone an author of a book that you mm. read, but come on, there's got to be something else, you know. There's got to be there's nothing else. It's it's really hard. Like so obviously it's in Maybe I should just kind of like explain it a little bit more. So it is an, an art festival. So you do get to walk around and see submitted pieces of art in different forms and formats. Okay. So for me, I've always been very more artistic, if you will. So I love drawing. So I love walking around looking at art. I, for instance, they did have a section off to the side where they had like nude models that would do different poses and you would sit there and sketch them. Mm. I sat there for a few of those and did some sketch work. No, I'm not going to share them. <laughs> no. Um, that's something that I'm always very kind of like, I always think I'm like my biggest critic. My wife thinks I should go and sell art and do stuff with my art. And I'm really? always like, no, I, I no. don't even think we've seen it yet. Yeah. No. But anyway, why are you scared? It's it's Jay's a, a little shy. I it's not necessarily a shy thing. It's when I get done with a piece of art, I look at it and I just see like the imperfections. It's mm. hard for you to see a project is done. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm always like, oh, I would do this differently. Let me redo it. And then I'm like, oh, I would do that differently. Let me redo it. Oh, and then it's just like it never to me is 100% done. I mean, yeah. I think a, I think a lot of art is kind of trial and error. Yeah. 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 I, I feel the same. I When I make music or even editing the podcast, sometimes when I finish it, I'm like, ugh, whatever. I'm just going to let go because, like, if I keep editing it and editing it and any of the editing it, it won't be that original creation that I saw in my mind. It will yeah. be something totally different and probably worse than what I originally had. Because sometimes through your first – iteration of something is your best iteration it's just you're over you're overlooking it because you're think you're just over criticizing yourself yeah and, and i think yeah I, I think for like work it's a little different so like when i'm typing up like a engineering report i'm very much there is a t like it i do want it to be perfect but there mm -hmm. is a cutoff point where it's like i've spent too much time on it submit it like turn it in uh, same with college, you know, like writing reports. It's like, okay, there's, there has to be like a, you're done. Um, with the podcast, I will say I kind of struggled with like the William Marston series. It took so long for us to kind of get that going. Cause I was always like, no, I need to like, I need to, I need to make changes to it. I need to change this. I need to do that. Like in my actual notes. And I also was like trying to like figure out how I was going to like present yeah. The information. I, I think that was good, though, that we we started, you know, a few episodes in on the series because, you know, gave us a chance to kind of like get into a groove. Of yeah. Shooting, I, you know, I feel like the William Marston series may have been a little. Might have been a little bad <laughs> for our first, you know, a couple episodes just because we didn't have like a group. We didn't even have like a natural like element to our podcast yet, like. I know you and I, we've been friends for many years, but it's like adding a new friend to a group, you know, like it's going to take a while to form that chemistry. Right. And, and uh, yeah, I also think like we're still very much trying to find our voice, establish who we are as a podcast. And then we, <laughs> we jump into this very daunting, like research paper, project, if you yeah. will, like. Yeah. William Marston, go. Like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, this seems like a like a college paper that you would be doing for like, yeah. you know, like a big grade. <laughs> yeah. Like a final, you know, a final project. But if you haven't checked it out already, the 
the first episode is actually published on yes, YouTube and Spotify and all the other podcasts. We'll get into that later. But yeah, so go check it out. Yeah, part three will be coming out soon. So make sure you go take a look. But uh, just to wrap up, Seif, uh, they had a main stage with burlesque performances. Oh, I love um, burlesque. Some strip teases, panels talking about stuff. That was going to be my other question. Was there nudity? Yes. Okay. Yes. But taste taste nudity. nudity. They did. I did not go to this. It was, a, I believe, at a different venue. They had the trying to remember what it was called, but essentially it was an amateur erotic film, like a short film that you could submit. Oh, And okay. you could go and watch all the short oh, films. Oh, it was like a film festival kind of thing? Yes, and oh, it was... that's cool. Is it like softcore film festival? Like, how does that work? So I, I was told that it was, it was very dependent on who submitted what but, but it could be pornographic it was pornographic is okay. what i was told oh. i i didn't go i was too much like nerding out over um art and rope art and rope <laughs> yeah and, that's fair and that's the thing right so you have these chase over there with art and rope and the pair of really large titties walks by and he's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, rope and that's rope. And that's like that's the thing is you have these different corners where stuff is always going on. So I specifically, for the most part, kind of sat in the Shibari area mm -hmm. and kind of hung out there for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there was there was a lot of other stuff going on that I kind of missed. Ah. But, but yeah, but I did I did see for instance there's there's people dressed. However, you could imagine, right? There's, oh, cool. There's people dressed in latex from head to toe. Lingerie. Uh, they're lingerie. So you get to, I'm like, excited for next year. <laughs> yeah. I did, like, I did ask one person, like, hey, I love your outfit. Like, where did you get that? Because it was kind of like a medieval chain mail. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I was like, that sounds really cool. Where Fancy. did you get this? Did they make it? Uh, they bought it off Etsy. Ah, that's someone where all made the it best for them. things are on Etsy. Yeah, yeah, that's where we got our, uh, Queen Maeve and Starlight. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. place from. Nice. Yeah, they were expensive, but handmade. Yeah. Really good. Well worth it. Well worth it, yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen it, go check out their Instagram. Yeah. I wish uh, Etsy had a wish list. They do. No, what? I mean, but I mean like. Oh, like a public. A yeah, public a one. Because, you know, like, list, yeah. in case your fans want to, like, get you something off of there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. Sounds like you had a really good time there. And next year. It would be really fun because I'm going to wear the hottest outfit, <laughs> and I'm going to. I, I maybe we can submit something for like the the video festival, maybe. or or even like try to get our podcast on there. There, I did actually make a few connections. <gasps> I can't promise anything. I am, yeah, I am trying to reach out to get some of those people on our podcast. That would be wonderful, and. As a personal goal, goal, I did state, <laughs> oh, I will be submitting artwork. Oh, Ooh. so you will submit artwork, like the artwork that you're like, oh, I want to submit it. I'm going to. You gotta okay. get over your shyness. You gotta. If you, that's the th thing. Your your artwork might be way better than you think it is, and you might have like a huge fan base waiting to see it. I don't think it's a shyness. I think it's a perfectionist. Yeah, I'm yeah. very critical of yeah. what I personally yeah. do. That's what I, yeah. I took from that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Mixed yeah. with a little shyness. Mm. Yeah. Just a little. Tiny. A smidge. Just a smidge. So, yeah, we have a Discord. If you want to join our Discord. And talk about the Seattle Erotic Art Festival. And I do want to point out, so I have been a part of discords where the content creators or the owners, they don't really interact with the members of their discord. I know often we get very kind of busy with all the other stuff that we do. However, I do say we are pretty active in our discord. For instance, we did like the, the live stream yeah. Only for our Discord where we jumped on and anyone on the Discord could join and 
ask us questions and mm-hmm. just chat and mingle. And for the most part, we're kind of in there, at least one of us every day, yeah. kind of just chatting or posting. Yeah. So if y'all yeah. need to reach us or talk about anything, that's definitely right. where to try to get us. Yes. We'll try to, you know, respond. As yeah. As and as if possible. there's uh, topics that you think that we should talk about, that's the best place to get us that information. Aside from like CF, I know we had other things to talk about, mostly trans related. Nikki was going to bring something up about yeah. a, rep- a representative. <gasps> a in representative Montana. in Montana. Oh. Yeah. So a representative in Montana who happens to be transgender. Oh, wow. Was voted to be removed from the floor, like the, oh, well, the room. Well. So like she can't go to like work at her seat anymore. Can't like talk or even be in the in in the area or in the room. Sorry. Right. Right. So uh, apparently it's because she wouldn't apologize for a comment that she made. She was, you know, advocating for uh, gender affirming care. Of course. You know, for. Fighting for people. Yeah. For, you know, transgender people to representing her people more like. Right. And she was, you know, selected by the people to represent. Yeah. Right. Right. Representing. Yeah. Her job. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that bill was passed and she was upset about it. And she. Which bill was that? The one banning it. Banning. Oh, gender, gender affirming, affirming care. care. That's right. Sorry. Right. So she said to everyone in the room, you know, next time you bow your head in prayer, know that the blood on your hands is yours. Powerful statement. I mean, yeah. it's true because, like, them passing, trying, voting together to pass a bill like that is literally putting a lot of the, our community at risk because they see that as people don't accept us, people hate us, we get depressed, and some some of us hurt ourselves because of this, and some of us t- end up taking our lives. And I guarantee you there's a lot of people that already have. Yeah, I mean, not being allowed to exist in the way that you want to exist, not being seen in the way that you want to be seen, that's that's hard for a lot of people. And, yeah, (laughs) people hurt themselves. It's unfortunate. I can't believe, I can't believe they even, like, I don't know much about, like, represent house representatives or anything of that sort oh, or, or career politicians, but I can't believe they were able to just vote her out. Like well, that. so um, conservatives hold two thirds of that establishment. So, oh, okay. so um, when she decided not to apologize, you, you know, like you have to say you're sorry. And she's like, no, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. This is, this is how I feel. This is- yeah. It's not like she was being rude about it. She was just being honest. Like, yeah. So, but Two thirds didn't like that, and they quickly voted her to leave. And she's, you know, having to do her job remotely now. Wow. Well, yeah. How you feel about that, Jay? I know you're not trans, but I don't like politics at all. Me neither. I I saw like a lot of. The only reason why we brought it up is because she is trans, yeah. and, and she's just a couple of states over. This yeah. is, these are like our neighbors. Yeah. yeah. If we get into politics at all, it usually heavily deals with either BDSM relating to J or trans. Or it has to deal with us in some way. We don't just bring up politics to bring up politics. Yeah. And if we do, it's usually to make fun of politics <laughs> <laughs> or poke fun at it. But yeah, it's just, it's another trans person standing up and being silenced. Trying to do the right thing for her and her people. You know, yeah, it's it's getting scary out there in America. But we're not people, so. Oh, I think I'm a weird alien creature from a different planet. I mean, does that go back (laughs) to the old terminology of transsexuals, like and dehumanization? and And again, I always when I see people that are fighting against trans rights, they always seem to be much older than us. Oh, and yeah. I kind of just wonder, like, is that 
is it part of the terminology? Like, I mean, or, or, and supremely, they're either much older than us or younger and supremely religious. It's yeah. just those back in my day people, you know. Yeah, but <laughs> see. the mental health counselor that i was lucky to work with both on passing some very positive mental health things for students of the college that i went to Mm -hmm. and then also the person the same person that i went to to get get help about my kind of kinky BDSM side, she was very religious. And I should say it still is very religious. Mm -hmm. She never pushed her religion onto me. She, at the end of the day, she wanted to help me become the best person that I could be. And she, she kind of viewed it as, you know, I might not 100% agree with your lifestyle. However, if you need help, I'm going to help you. And I'm going to help you accept who you are rather than trying to change you. And I, I, I feel like a lot of religious people miss that point, right? Yeah. Now. Well, they make it about themselves. Yeah. They don't. They're like, you're, Jesus wants you to change. You're never really a factor. In, in those situations, it's all about how you make them feel as a person. Yeah. And they're, you know, is this sin? Am I sinning by helping this person? And actually another person that I was speaking with, they were very kind of curious about BDSM and stuff. They were also very religious. And, you know, I was... They would ask questions, and we would talk and talk and talk and talk about it. And then finally, one time, I, I just asked. I was like, you know, I, I have to ask you a question here. Like, you're very curious. You're asking all these questions. Like, how do you how do you feel about this topic with you being so religious? Mm. And he pretty much was just like, you know, I might not agree with it, but it's something I don't know anything about, and I'm very curious. And also, he was like, I'm not going to push my religion onto you. But if you go back and you look at the scripture, Jesus, the people that he hung out with were sinners. He hung out with sinners all the time. Mm-hmm. And it was more how he viewed it. He, he said it was more so about just trying to be a positive influence around them. And not so much like trying to like cast that first stone, if you will, and kind of demonize what they were doing and trying to. Yeah, change them. It was like just trying to get to know like who they were, where they came from, exactly, and then just being a positive influence. And then if you wanted to change, hey, you feel comfortable, you can come talk to me about religion and stuff like that. But he's like, I'm not going to push it on you. Yeah. yeah, and me and me and Jenny, we don't like hate religious people. Oh no, definitely not. Right. In you fact, know? I love talking to religious people that love talking to me because. I feel like it's educational on both sides, you know. Yeah. Sometimes they give me a piece of the Bible that I never knew about. And sometimes, most times, I give them information about trans people that wakes them up. They're like, holy crap. Wow, they're just you know? people. And then they realize, some people will realize that they can be religious and accept every human as the way they want to be. Just because you think my life is sin doesn't mean you have to push that upon me. You can keep that to yourself and still be my friend and still enjoy life. You know, like, let's let's worry about now, here, where we're presently at, in the one life that we have. Yeah. Definitely. So, I think that kind of wraps up things that we're talking about today. But <laughs> yeah. We had, a, oh, we had a pretty pretty much everywhere today. But yeah. uh, we, uh, we've been having a lot of activity in our Discord lately, and we've been kind of posting in there often. Jay was talking about earlier in the episode how – he has been posting the Seattle Erotic Art Festival pictures in there. Nikki's been posting selfies, and I've been... That doesn't sound like me. I've been trying to be kind of active with the, all the editing. Hey, uh, something if y'all are interested, we do live streams on our Discord with our fans if you want to talk to us. We're still trying to decide on days. 
that worked best for everybody. But if that's something that you'd like to participate in, join our Discord and you can chat to us, you know, in person. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And the live stream went pretty well, too. Yeah. Thanks to uh, the one fan that came out there and joined us. You know who you are. Yeah. You know who you are. Yeah, you do. I also want to point out that Obviously, you can watch the podcast on YouTube, but you can also go to Spotify, Amazon Music, Samsung Podcasts. Most podcast streaming services have Apple us podcasts, on their platform. Apple Podcasts, Podcast Index. If it exists, yeah. it should be there. We have our RSS feed. We, we have, have so many podcast sources. You could just catch us. Podcasting podcasts. And we have a Patreon. We do have a Patreon. And also, if you enjoy the content that we create, please go buy us a coffee on Kofi. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is it really called Kofi because you're just buying people coffee? Kofi coffee. Or is that like is that like a Patreon kind of thing? That's its own thing. It's its own thing. You can just do a one-time donation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, all the stuff that I was, like, looking at on Discord, it was all sub-based, like, doing subscriptions. Oh, okay. So, it's kind of like Patreon. I thought it was literally, because it's named Kofi. You made a joke. Never you want to know? Never mind. <laughs> but somebody tipped us uh, money for coffee. Oh, they did? Yeah. yeah. Cringe why Lord. Are we, why aren't we drinking that coffee right now? Cringe Lord, thank you for your donation <laughs> on Kofi for coffee. Yeah. Well, coffee helps us. Yeah. yeah. Coffee keeps us awake. And special thanks to Atio who recommended the AI. Autopod, oh my god, the Autopod yeah. has been saving my life. Oh my god. You have no idea. So much time is being saved now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just make sure you're catching us for our live updates on Twitter. If you want to catch more uh, of us talking one-on-one, things of that nature, maybe share some food porn or you know your selfies, memes, or all that nonsense, we got Discord. All the links will be down below, of course. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification because that will let you know when we're going to post a new video or short, and that will give you an email notification. So, yeah, just click that bell. Also, we love all of you for trying to support us, staying active in our Discord, giving us suggestions. We love it all. Love it Thank all. you. Thank yeah. you so much. So this has been an Unnatural Sun podcast. Thank you for joining us on our talk about the Seattle Erotic Art Festival and a couple other sidebar conversations, including about Zoe Zephyr and Florida bathroom walls. <laughs> Hate that. Anyway, I've been Jenny Banks. See you later. Stay kinky. That's an order. Until next time, I'm Nikki Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs>